Hi, I'm Adam Kalp and you're at BeachCast. This is another video in my basic refactoring series. Please check out the playlist for other videos in this series. Let's talk about making variable names more meaningful with refactoring. Stick around and we'll get right on that. Welcome back. As I said, this is another video in my basic refactoring series. So check out the other ones. This video is going to continue from the previous one, which was the refactor extract method. Now you don't have to watch these in order, but a couple things might make more sense if you do that. I'll link to it up above. So if you want to go check out that video, please go ahead. Uh, otherwise you can stick around and watch that one afterwards. And that's fine too. When it comes to code, we use variables a lot. We use variables all over the place to represent data, to allow us to move data from one place to another and use it in calculations, use it in um, you know, generating content in, in many cases. And one of the things that I notice is that as we're coding, sometimes the variable names need to change to keep the code meaningful. Maybe the value that we're storing in a variable has changed with other refactors or with other design uh, concepts. So we have to rename it to keep pace with that refactor. One thing to keep in mind is we always want our variables to be very descriptive. We want them to be meaningful. We want to be able to look at the code and understand, you know, what a variable might contain through the name. Every programming language has its own conventions and standards. If you're programming in Python or JavaScript or what have you, they all have their own. Uh, in PHP, one of the most common is the PSR 12 coding style and standards, and that is part of the PHP fig. So if you haven't seen that, I'll link to it down in the description so you can check out the PHP fig various standards and conventions uh, that we use in PHP you will want to check with your development team to see if they have a standard encoding style that they use within the team. I recommend that all teams have a coding standard, whether they use the PHP fig or not. We just wanna make sure that they have some sort of standard so that way everybody on the team can be developing code somewhat similarly and making it more readable for everybody. Some things to keep in mind when it comes to variables is, again, making variable names meaningful. For instance, if we had a, a variable name of product and another variable name of product info, and yet another one saying product data or product description, if we had all of those within our code base, how would we know which one meant what? Well, what, is, what is the difference between product and product info? What is the difference between either of those and product data? So it's very important that we have a naming, naming system within our application. For instance, if you're going to have a variable and you're going to store product info there, make it the same. If, if you use product, keep it product everywhere. If you make it product info, make it product info everywhere. Try not to have too many names that can cause confusion and make them very descriptive. Some other things to avoid when creating variable names is avoid confusing characters. For instance, the lowercase l. It looks very similar to a capital I. So you want to be careful using the lowercase l or the capital I. Another thing to be uh, cognizant of is using uppercase O. It can look very much like a zero depending on the font that you're using. So those are some things that you just want to be wary of and, and try not to use those if you can help it. So with that being said, let's look at some code. I'm going to follow in the example that I did in the last video uh, using the code base from my GitHub repository, Refactoring 101. So if you want to check out that code base, I'll link to that down in the description. Again, it's the Refactoring 101 code base that I have on my GitHub repository been there for many years, has a lot of people uh, that have looked at it, read it, followed it, and uh, I encourage you to check it out as well. It's freely available for anybody to see. Today we're going to be looking at refactoring and following in line. So now that we've done the, the extract method, now we need to take a look at some of the variable names that the meanings may have changed now that we refactored the code and extracted to another method. So let's look at the code. I'd like to take a moment to introduce the sponsor for this video, 
Cloudways. Cloudways allows you to focus on your business and avoid web hosting hassles. Go live in minutes by selecting your application, selecting the vendor your server should be housed with, then select the server size for your chosen provider, and you're ready. Please use the affiliate link in the description below to support the Beachcast channel and to claim your one month of free hosting. Okay, so in the IDE, I've got two files open right now. One is 002 extract method, which is the end result of the extract method from the last video. The other one that I have open is 003, which is a rename variable. And that is the contents of what we renamed after we got done doing the extraction. Now, rather than look at these, what I'm going to do is actually do the renaming that we need. So if we look at 002, which is active on the screen right now, and I scroll down to the statement method, which is where we did our refactoring in the last video. Um, one of the things that I did is inside this for each, we extracted a method and the method is called a mount for. Now, as part of that, this for each, we had a, a variable rentals, right? Or a field rentals. And as we, as we looped over it, we were making them instances of each. So as it looped over every rental, it became each. Now each doesn't really carry a, a lot of meaning. Throughout the code, if you were to see each, you wouldn't know what that meant. So what we're gonna do is we're going to rename this. Now I could certainly go down through. Now in the IDE, you notice if I, if I click in each, it also highlights every other instance of each within the code base. Now I could go through and, and change each one of these, but what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna use the IDE and let it refactor for me, at least to a certain degree. So if I right click on this variable and go down to refactor and rename, it'll prompt me, what do you wanna rename it? And I could choose something here. Uh, now in this case, it's automatically detecting that we're looping over something called rentals and therefore each iteration, you might want it to be a singular rental. So it's given me that as an op option. So I'm going to go ahead and double click that. Now when I do that, it's going to do the refactor for me and it renamed the other five places that we see in the code to be rental as well. Because it, it just makes sense. If you're using it as each, it's going to be used as rental. And now that's a lot more meaningful because as we're looping over, every, every instance of rentals is an individual rental. So if we go down now and look at amount four, so I'm gonna go ahead and control click on amount four so it scrolls down automatically to amount four, we see that it's still expecting the argument of each. And if I click on each, you can see everywhere that each is used within the code. Now again, each carries no valid reference. I don't know what an each is, but I do know that I sent rentals. So maybe I want to refactor this to also be rental much like earlier because each item being used in amount four is a rental. So I'm going to go ahead and, and use the IDE again. Now I could certainly go down through here. There are six instances of each other than the argument being passed to the function. But um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and use the IDE here as well. So I'm gonna right click, go down to refactor and rename and here, what I'm going to do now, it highlights the variable. I'm gonna go ahead and type in rental. And you notice that as I'm typing, it also changes all instances as I'm typing. And then if I hit enter, it renames all of them. And now our renaming has been done. So the code is now a lot more meaningful by changing out each with rental. We can read through the code a lot more easily. We understand what's going on. I realized that was a very simplistic example of renaming variables after we did our previous refactor, but I hope you got something from this. Now I'm gonna link up above here to the previous video in the series, so that way you can go and check out the extract method video as well. And I hope you got something from this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. Leave a comment down below. If you liked the video and you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. And also remember to subscribe so you'll be notified the next time I create a new video in this series or any other video for that matter. So take care. I hope you're doing well and be good to yourself and others. I'll see you next time.